Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. Uh, so I want to make a um, couple quick videos here, one of them being um, in regards to fantasy football. Uh, I'm a huge fantasy football fan, player, what have you. Um, had a lot of success over the years. Uh, last season I won four out of the six leagues that I was in, all money leagues. Um, the other two made it to the championship game, so playoffs in all six, uh, finished in the money in all six. Um, and, and it's something that I just wanted to share some tips. I know uh, many of us are in leagues with our coworkers, our friends. We're looking for bragging rights. We're looking to talk trash. Um, and, and some folks who may not follow football as much or uh, make it trapped in certain things or in just really some high competitive leagues with uh, other people who are uh, avid followers um, have, haven't been able to make the playoffs or struggled uh, throughout the years and looking for uh, just to get off to a good start. Um, Want to have some input for you guys. Uh, I know throughout this season we'll, we'll be making more videos and, and, and content just to churn out, uh, to follow things along in terms of what I notice. But just to get people off to a good start draft-wise so you don't fall in that 0 02, 03 hole where you have to do something radical or make a ridiculous trade to get back into playoff contention and ultimately your ship sinks. Uh, without further ado, so I have three quick tips. Three quick tips going into your draft because uh, I know many people are going to be drafting after week three of the preseason. That's, to me, the ideal time to do a fantasy draft. Uh, if you haven't done a draft already, this some of these things can still apply to uh, how you work the waiver wire and identify some other guys as the 53-man uh, rosters get set. Uh, so number one, under, this is the most important thing to me that I always pay attention to, especially being in six different leagues. You need to understand the rules and the scoring of the league that you are participating in. What do I mean by that? When you look at Matthew Barry and ESPN and, and Roto World and all these things, they do a great job of ranking players and matchups and all that on a week-to-week -week basis, but they're often using standard scoring, okay? When you start a league in Yahoo, whatever, ESPN, NFL.com, there's a standard scoring system. But I can tell you right now, the six leagues that I'm in, none of those six go by standard scoring. There are a lot of people, a lot of commissioners like to customize their leagues. The league that I run, I customize the settings. Um, so you need to be aware, especially those of you who are going to be doing multiple fantasy leagues, um, whether it's a, a snake draft or auction, you have to draft according to the rules. Can't stress that enough. And it's not just uh, PPR. It's, you know, um, some leagues have half a point PPR. Some leagues do a full point PPR. Uh, some leagues do crazy things like special team scoring. Um, uh, you know, how many wide receivers looking at just the, the, the roster allotment that you have. How many people do you have on the bench? All of these things, uh, to me, uh, play a role in how I decide to kind of draft. Another big thing is the value of the quarterbacks. Are we going to get four points per touchdown pass or are we going to get six points per touchdown pass? Uh, are they going to make them equivalent uh, to the skill position players? Um, all these things are, are very, very important. If you're in an auction draft, for example, um, if you're in a one-point PPR league, then people like uh, a Julian Edelman, even though I know he's on the, the suspension or whatever, but these guys that play in the slot and rack up a lot of catches, like a Jarvis Landry last year, um, you know, their value is going to be very different and from a non-PPR uh, to a traditional PPR, whether you're spending... Uh, 15 to $20, um, you know, an auction, or if they go down to, um, you know, below $10, uh, you know, all those, these things you got to kind of pay attention to. Um, and it's the number one thing I key in on uh, when drafting, because that's also going to tell me how quickly I need to uh, get my running backs assigned. Um, and then, you know, what round, if I'm in a snake or how much money I'm going to have to leverage uh, on the quarterback position. Uh, number two, there's fantasy football is no place for fandom or player loyalty. What do I mean by that? My brother, <laughs> God bless him. I play fantasy sports with him every year. 
He consistently targets Cowboys players. He's a diehard Cowboys fan. Uh, you could put it in the bank, and we're an auction. I always knew he would overpay for Jason Witten. He would overpay for Des Bryant. Uh, he would overpay for DeMarco Murray, what have you. Uh, now it's Dak Prescott. You have to put your fandom aside. And that not only means favoring your favorite players, but that also means undervaluing people who are rivals to you or in your division. You have to put that stuff away. Like me as a Cowboys fan, I can't be like, well, I don't like Carson Wentz because he plays for the Eagles, so I'm gonna, um, I'm either gonna pass on him or not pick Eagles players, or you know, I'm only gonna bid um, some low number for him. And meanwhile, people in your league who don't care about these things are taking advantage of getting better players, uh, and now you're at a disadvantage. So that you have to put your fandom aside. Does it suck? Um, having to potentially root for somebody's numbers on a team that your your fandom that you're rooting against, yes. Um, but if there's money on the table, now if there's no money on the line, it's just you know leave bragging rights. Number one, I don't know why you're playing fantasy sports if money's not involved. That's just my personal opinion. But if you're in one of those leagues, knock yourself out. But if there's money on the table. You have to let that stuff go. I'll be honest with you. I made I won uh, a league a couple years ago because of Alfred Morris. I drafted him as a, when he was a rookie because Kyle Shanahan was there. And I understood the scheme. Which leads me into my third tip. Coaches and schemes. And this is for those of you who may under, have a better understanding of the game. Um, and if you don't, I'll give you some names and what I mean by that. There are certain coaches that run certain offenses that are more conducive to fantasy output than others. You see this every year, even if they change teams. Andy Reid has always been a fantasy-friendly football coach, in my opinion. Sean Payton, fantasy-friendly coach. Uh, Kyle Shanahan, definitely one of my favorites. Last year, Sean McVay. Um, Even Dre Gruden, to some extent. Uh, But those guys... Um, and then the, obviously the you know the, the the Josh McDaniels New England uh, system with Tom Brady. This also ties into co- good quarterback play, but those coaches are always going to have uh, high producing wide receivers, uh, running backs typically over a thousand yards or over ten touchdowns, and quarterbacks that are over four thousand yards, thirty touchdowns, blah blah blah. Why do I highlight those things? It's very important because. When you're looking at trying to identify potential sleepers, it's better to look at people that are within a proven system um, that, hey, yeah, this guy may be right now listed as the third string running back, but he's in Green Bay under a Mike McCarthy offense. So if he gets in, he's playing with Aaron Rodgers. And you saw a lot of people uh, leverage that last year with Aaron Jones and some of the other Green Bay running backs that came into play, Ty Montgomery the year before. Um, It's yeah, you may see somebody's the starting running back on uh, Miami Dolphins or the Browns or the Bears. And not to say that those teams don't ever produce good fantasy output, but the chances of you hitting on a guy like that on a poor team or a coach that's more defensive-minded, it's not going to be the same. One of the things I've always looked at, just who's the X receiver on a Kyle Shanahan offense? I know that person's going to get a lot of targets based upon their their scheme and their offense. Uh, North Turner, I believe, is now the OC for the Carolina Panthers. One thing I know, X-heavy. So somebody like a Devin Funches is going to be, you know, to me now holds more value than he did um, in the Shula offense from before. Um, You know, you look at last year, I brought up Andy Reid before. Look at this, Kareem Hunt, Tyreek Hill, Alex Smith, Finishes, what, number four overall amongst all fantasy QBs. Travis Kelsey is the number one tight end. Um, So those are the, if you just follow the dots with the coaches, that'll take you to the most productive fantasy players. Um, So there's teams, there's there's whole teams that I just eliminate. I'm like, eh, not picking from that crop, not drafting from there. And then there's other schemes and teams that may not have the most talent on paper, but I know from the coaching and how they've historically operated, the targets will be there, the carries will be there, the goal line attempts will be there, and the scoring production will be there. Um, So just to recap those three things that I mentioned, 
Always understand the rules and scoring of the league that you're in. No time for fandom or player loyalty. Just because somebody's your favorite um, doesn't mean they're going to be the most productive fantasy player, especially when there's money on the line. You have to put that aside. And number three, coaches and schemes matter in fantasy football. And that's why I keep beating so many of you guys every year uh, because I follow that and I recognize those trends. Um, and I'll continue to do so this year. So just some food for thought. Um, you guys, you know, I'm not I'm not going to be the guy that's giving out, you know, weekly sleepers and all that. That's that's for y'all and the Matthew Berries and all that people to decide. It's more philosophy based with me, uh, because if, if you have a st solid philosophy, uh, no matter what league you'll, you, you're in, you'll be one of the better players for sure. Uh, appreciate you guys as always. Let me know in the comments if you have any other helpful tips for somebody who's getting started in fantasy or, um, you know, has been struggling over the years. And we'll look to discuss. Appreciate y'all.